Hello, everybody. Welcome to my lair. All right, that was awkward and weird. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about Book of Beasts by Holly Day. This was really good. Spoiler alert. Um, I just, I love it. Um, some of it's kind of weird. Some of it, uh, there's a thing about this that's like, like one of the things that, um, we're going to be going over in the poetic anarchy thing is writing like what you know and writing where you live and stuff like that. And when you read this, like, it is very clear, like, where she lives, like, what she knows. Um, it's, you just, you, it paints a picture. Um, so I'm going to read a couple things. I've only been awake for a little bit, guys, so I'm kind of, like, off a little bit here. <clears throat> so this is the deal. <clears throat> In my living room is a woman with black hair over her face, white skin, dirt under her chipped nails, water dripping in a puddle around her as if pouring out of her very skin. No, it's blood. In the bedroom, shadows undulate like tentacles underwater. The bed covers writhe as though hiding a family of sick sea serpents or rabid squirrels. In my kitchen is a man with fire for eyes, a mouthful of grubs, skin crisscrossed with old scars and new bruises, hanging in midair as if dangling by a hook. Ever since I bought that cursed lock storage chest, at the boarded up second hand store from the guy with the sinister laugh and the bad facial hair things just haven't been the same around here <clears throat> okay and this one is called tourist season We'd sit by the lake, and, he'll tell, and he'd tell me stories of places he'd been with convoluted names like Nebraska and Mississippi, the difference in the way one pronounces Kansas and Arkansas. The people in his stories were as exotic as the places they lived. Men who cut sheet metal into animal silhouettes, bent spades into birdhouses, and turned old train cars into hotels. I wanted so badly to be with him in Colorado, to stand in the exact spot where four state lines met, to take a small rubber raft over rocks and dangerous rapids and survive it all. He kept saying, next time, next time, I promise, next time. I waited by the lake for him to come and get me, waited with my suitcase packed, ready to leave visions of Indianapolis burning holes in my brain, but he never came back to get me, never took me away. So that's kind of like one of those sad love story things. Um, and this one's really cool, it's called The House Guest. I took a deep breath and I take a deep breath and fix my hair, open the refrigerator door and smile as comfortingly as I can at the small boy with the impossibly large dark eyes and the stringy black hair that lives in my refrigerator this week. Next to the plastic covered leftover pot roast and potatoes my daughter-in-law brought me last night next to the half-eaten sponge cake I made for company that never came next to an apple with a bite taken out of it more brown than red I reach into the refrigerator and turn the carton so that the little boy is facing me from inside the fridge 
partly so that he doesn't have to spend all day staring at the back wall of the refrigerator, and partly so I can reread the particulars of his disappearance. Yesterday, when I first brought him into the house, I was sure he was with his mother, Janet, listed as having disappeared the same day. But today, I imagine him in a dark hole, a cistern, trapped close to home, but too far underground. For anyone to hear him call out for help, his tiny foot perhaps stuck under a rock, struggling feebly as the rats grow brave and draw closer to where he huddles in the dark. I wonder if I should go out and try to find him myself, but I don't really know where to start looking. His name is Timothy, according to the carton, but I've been calling him Tab the whole time because I like that name and because he sort of looks like a Tab to me. It's been nice having you here, Tab, I say. As I shake the container, there's just about enough milk left for one more morning cup of coffee. I hope you've enjoyed your stay. Oh, and then I'll just read one more to you guys here. And um, this one here is something that I have... Um, I, I too have felt this way <laughs> at times. Okay. Um, this is called Bloodlines. The maple sends its helicopter seed across the yard in desperation dreams of propagation. I rake most of them up, rip out the long roots of the ones that slip past me, take root, and try to grow. I sometimes wonder if my tree hates me, if it feels angry when it sees me, with my gardening shears clipping its offspring close to the ground or if it's resigned itself to the fact that it will never be surrounded by a forest of its own family. I think of these violent acts of mine during heavy storms when the limbs of the tree whips around my roof. If it's using the wind and lightning as an excuse to drop branches and clumps of leaves on my lawn, if it's aiming for me and my children in an act of retaliation so sly it would never be blamed. <clears throat> Book of Beasts, Holly Day. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's awesome. Like, it's good, 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 good stuff. So, um, yeah, that's it. Let me know down below what you thought of those and if you liked it and um, if you've read any of her other stuff because she's done a ton of stuff. So um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.